Well, hello once again, and welcome to uh, Lunchtime with Pastor Shane for this uh, Wednesday, March 31st. We're at uh, Hump Day, so uh, halfway through the week, and uh, we're going to start off as we usually do with our world's greatest collection of church jokes. And so I've got a real short joke in here. It's called Cartoon Cutline. A sign painter is quizzing a robed prophet of doom. He asks, you want that sign to read, the world ends tomorrow. When do you have to have it? <laughs> Nothing like stating the obvious or asking the obvious, huh? Well, for, uh, before we get started today, let's uh, go to the Lord and invite the Holy Spirit into our time together, as that is really the main purpose, is spending time with God's Holy Spirit as His Spirit speaks into our spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, you uh, said Jesus to suffer, die, and rise again for our sake, but you also gave us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we could experience that transforming resurrection power in our own lives, in our ministry. Lord, we have made this time to be able to sit quietly before you that you may continue to speak to us, sometimes in a whisper, sometimes in a normal voice, and sometimes as you shout. But Lord, help us, whatever our need is, at whatever level, help us to hear from you now. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, our psalm for this week is Psalm 23. And so we will turn to that psalm uh, now. Uh, psalm 23, we will read that in um, a translation that is called The Voice. So uh, the voice, sometimes we'll add a few little words here and there, but um, let's do this. Uh, let's see. My phone just messed up. So let me see here. I'll pull it up here where I need to have it. Here we go. Psalm 23, and we're going to read it in the voice. All right, here we go. Again, this is a uh, song of David. <clears throat> it has a little, uh, the voice always puts a little synopsis at the beginning of these psalms. And so it says, Psalm 23 is, is the best known and most beloved psalm in the collection. Surprisingly, it casts humanity as sheep, stupid, helpless sheep. <laughs> but the long lasting appeal of Psalm 23 is a direct result of that casting because the imagery is both soothing and accessible. When he was a boy, King David was a shepherd watching his father's flock, flocks in the hills around Bethlehem. In those days, too, it was common to refer to kings in the Near East as shepherds, but not all shepherd kings cared for their sheep. Though David tried to shepherd his people well, he knew the truth. The eternal is the true shepherd. In John 10, 11, Jesus makes a bold claim. He declares that he is the good shepherd. Immediately, his disciples detected the resonance of Psalm 23 in his words. Those of us who follow Jesus today come to know him as that gentle but strong shepherd who guides us through life if we will follow him. So here it is from the voice, the 23rd Psalm. The eternal is my shepherd. He cares for me always. He provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water. He soothes my fears. He makes me whole again, steering me off worn, hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name. Even in the unending shadows of death's darkness, I am not overcome by fear. Because you are with me in those dark moments, near with your protection and guidance, I am comforted. You spread out a table before me, provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies. You care for all my needs, anointing my head with soothing, fragrant oil, filling my cup again and again with your grace. Certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. I will always be with the internal, eternal in your house forever. So obviously a different translation, and uh, we can uh, pull some some other things out of that for that reason. Uh, maybe hear some, some words that we would, wouldn't have uh, otherwise. Uh, 
So our scripture reading uh, then for this Wednesday comes again from a New Testament uh, book from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. So I'd ask you to turn to John 13, verses 21 through 38, and I will read that in the New Living Translation. So John chapter 13, verses 21 through 38. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, who's he talking about? So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. <clears throat> but why can't I come now, Lord? He asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. Well, we all, uh, if we've grown up in the church, know that story, don't we? And uh, remember it well. It's usually part of the Holy Week uh, readings. And so now as we uh, turn to our readings for reflection, we're going to read uh, from Waiting for God by uh, Simone Weil. And here's what he writes, or she writes. God created through love and for love. God did not create anything except love itself and the means to love. He created love in all its forms. He created beings capable of love from all possible distances because no other could do it. He himself went to the greatest possible distance, the infinite distance. Now that, let's read it again because it's important that we grasp that. God did not create anything except love itself and the means to love. He created love in all its forms. He created beings capable of love from all possible distances. Because no other could do it, he himself went to the greatest possible distance, the infinite distance. This infinite distance between God and God, this supreme tearing apart, this agony beyond all others, this marvel of love is the crucifixion. Nothing can be further from God than that which has been made accursed. This tearing apart over which supreme love places the bond of supreme union, echoes perpetually across the universe in the midst of the silence, like two notes, separate yet melting into one, like pure and heart-rending harmony. This is the word of God. The whole creation is nothing but its vibration. When human music in its greatest purity pierces our soul, this is what we hear through it. When we have learned to hear the silence, that is what we grasp more distinctly through it. Those who persevere in love hear this note from the very lowest depths into which affliction has thrust them. From that moment, they can no longer have any doubt. Men struck down by affliction, that's used in the generic term, men and women struck down by affliction, are at the foot of the cross. 
almost at the greatest possible distance from God. It must not be thought that sin is a greater distance. Sin is not a distance. It is a turning of our gaze in the wrong direction. That's an interesting thought. Sin is not a distance from God. It is turning our gaze in the wrong direction. Well, as we have uh, read the scriptures and pondered those thoughts uh, by Simone Weil, let's uh, now go to the Lord uh, for our time of prayer as you lift up uh, your own joys and concerns, as well as for the, those of, uh, that you have for others. And then I'll close this out. Let's pray. Lord God, we come humbly before you. And as we all have experienced the wind this week, and as we all experience the wind that seems to always show up at our West Campus, uh, they're mindful that uh, your Holy Spirit is often uh, associated um, with the wind. The wind is used as an illustration of your spirit and how it moves, and blows at different levels. And so we have carved out this alone time really to be with your spirit, that that spirit may speak into our spirits and it is a time of complete silence and listening. It is a stillness, and yet your spirit is moving, moving like the wind. And for some of us, it will come softly like a light breeze. For others, it will come like uh, a um, medium breeze, kind of a, a nice little wind, uh, just enough to, to perhaps uh, get a kite up in the air. But for others, your spirit will come like a mighty rushing wind into our heart, soul, and mind. Lord, whatever you have for us today, Lord, may we receive it. May we begin now to prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our very physical bodies to spend this time with you, to wait patiently, to wait patiently upon you as you have so patiently waited for us. Lord, we know that we can cast all of our cares upon you, any care that is on uh, any of our hearts, minds, and souls right now, we lift up knowing that you care for each and every one of us and you desire wholeness for all of us in every aspect of our being. And so we lift those up to you. We lay them at your feet. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our uh, hymn is uh, The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want uh, from the Scottish Psalter. And so for today, it is, uh, the verse is, Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. So again, the third verse, Yea, do I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. Well, uh, thanks for joining me again today. I leave you to go sit quietly and listen to God's Holy Spirit as you have written those words or phrases down and are ready to meditate on those. Be open to hearing what the Holy Spirit has to, to speak to you. So here this benediction from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Well, blessings on you and we will see you back here tomorrow at noon.